What's up everyone, welcome to Kai's channel. My last review of the year will be this. Chogokin's Gundam Factory Yokohama RX-78 F-00 Gundam. Now as most of you might know, this is based out of the life-size movable Gundam that's in Yokohama, Japan. Obviously due to the virus situation, we aren't able to see it in real life. So this is as close as we can get as to seeing it. So without wasting any more time, let us get started. The packaging for this is actually very similar to the metal builds. You got the two layers of accessories followed by the main body of the Gundam in a styrofoam packaging. And in front of you is the first layer. You can see right at the top is the bazooka of the Gundam. And then on the left side you can see is the red shield. In the center you got the antenna. And then underneath that is the rifle. Right next to those is this transparent piece that's actually a little tool for you to get into some of the pieces that's very hard to get the fingers into and this piece actually helps you on those. And then on the right side you got the different hands that you can change into. And finally at the bottom is the beam saber effects. And that's it with the first layer. Now here is the second layer. The second layer is mainly consists of the display stand. You can see that clearly in the center you can see the base of the display stand. And then on the top is the supporting arm. And on the right side, these two are actually the holders for the weapon that you can mount onto the base of the stand. Which we'll get into that later. And that's it with the accessories. Before we go into the main attraction, the main body, let's go through the weapons that it came with as clearly there's actually not a lot. As you can see in front of you, there is only the bazooka. As you can see in front of you, there's only the bazooka, the shield, the beam rifle, and also the beam saber. In the real life Gundam, in the Gundam factory, there aren't any weapons that the Gundam holds. So these weapons you see right here are specifically for this product only. But I'm actually surprised that they didn't actually include the javelin and also the hammer that the Gundam uses in the story. Because right now, the weapons are just far too little for this product, for my liking. So let's go through them one by one and then we'll check out the main attraction later. So starting off we have is the bazooka. Now the bazooka is overall it's a matte white and then you have the metallic black on the top and also on the center that's right there around the cylinder. And then at the bottom the gray it's a plastic gray there's not much to it. But at the back you can actually see that those little circles are colored in silver which looks pretty nice. However, I must say that the white that's on this bazooka is actually not done very well. You can see it nearly the, on the front, there's some lines to it. Not sure if this is a failure on the painting or it's just the plastic that's like this. So it's not done too well on the white part. But aside from that, it actually looks okay. Also, there's actually no gimmicks on this one, just in case you're wondering. Next we have is the shield. Again, the white, it's a matte white, and then in the center you have, it's a metallic red, followed by a darker metallic red that's near on the eyepiece and also the left and right center side. And as for the yellow cross, that's a matte color as well. And then you have the decal EFSF right there near the top. Now the color is looking really great with the metallic red and also the dark metallic red. And then you have all these detailed lines that's all across the shield, making it much more details yet keeping the simplistic look of the RX-78 shield. And as for the gimmicks, there's only the movable arms that's at the back. You have the handle that's able to lift up for the Gundam to hold onto. And also you can adjust the height of the arm. Very typical gimmicks of the shield. And that's it. So here we have is the beam rifle. Now the beam rifle is actually a plastic gray all overall. And there's actually no other colors to it other than the scope which is a gold color. And aside from that, there's actually decals near on the back, very small and also on top of the scope which are these lines right there. Now although the coloring is very simple, there's actually the design lines all over it making it a lot more details than it was in the anime. As for the gimmicks, there's actually two small ones, which is one, the scopes can actually turn left and right. And also the handle in front of the trigger can also turn left and right. And that's it for the beam rifle. Last but not least is the beam saber handle. Now the beam saber handle, it consists of the matte white and also you have is the dark gray 
on the tip of the handle and also on the other side as well. And in the center, you have some of the decals right there that making this beam saber looks far more details than any of the beam saber that I've seen before for the RX-78. So definitely looking very good right here. And of course, the gimmicks is that you can combine this with the beam saber effects to form the actual beam saber. Other than that, there's nothing much to it. Alright, let's check out the main body and then we'll put all these onto it to check it out. Now here's the main attraction, the main body. Obviously this is modeled after the life-size Gundam in the Gundam factory, so the proportion is going to be a little bit weird. As you can see, the main body, the chest piece, and also the legs and arm are a slightly off. The body is a little big, but the arms and legs is a little thin compared to the rest of the body. However, the coloring is done very well. The chest piece, I like the dark blue and also the light blue that they incorporated in here. It looks really nice. And also the decals, they actually didn't left out any. You can see that there's the f on the left shoulder. And also on the right shoulder, they have the EFSF. And on the main chest, you can see that the little details on it as well. Really nice there. And of course, the rest of the body has that decals as well. So it's looking really great. Not to mention that there's the metal component. You can see all around the body on most of the joints, such as the shoulder, the elbow, the thigh, the knee, and also the ankle. Those are all metal joints. So we have that right there. But one thing that's actually very different from the usual metal components is that the chest piece, the dark blue and light blue part, that's metal as well. So this thing is actually quite heavy in terms of weight. Aside from the proportion, this is so far looking really great. And I love it a lot. Let's move on to the movements. As for the movement, obviously the head can turn 360 without any issues and it also can tilt up a little bit, like you see right now. As for the arms, on the shoulder part, you can rotate it 360 degrees, just like you see on the right arm, there's no problem with that one. And then you can actually tilt the arms horizontally like you see on the left arm. And that's as high as it can go. As for the elbow, you can actually turn it all the way touching the shoulder. That's very nice there. Lots of movement. And then as for the torso, you can't really move much here. You can't move front or back or sideways. So that's a little bit lacking right there. The only thing you can do is that you can turn the entire torso but only at a very slight degree. As for the thigh, you can actually move up as you can see on the left leg and also the knee, it bends all the way back touching the thigh. And also the ankle, you can actually move. But not only that, but you can see that on the tip of the toe, that part can actually move individually. Slightly, but still it can be moved. Alright, let's go check out what gimmicks this Gundam has. As for gimmicks, there's actually not a whole lot. The shoulder armor, you can move that up and also the flap in front and the back can open up as well, revealing the inner joint so you can see that clearly right there. As for the arms, when you move it horizontally, you can actually hear some clicks as you move onto it. And this goes the same for the knee section as well. Aside from that, when you move the thigh, the back of the thigh armor actually shifts up as well. Now this actually follows the life-size Gundam in the Gundam factory. So they're very accurate here on this. So that's definitely a kudos on that one. Besides these, all the weapons that I've showed you just before can be mounted onto this Gundam, not only on the hand, but also at the back of the Gundam. As you can see on the backpack, there's actually this little hole, which is for you to mount the shield on it right here. So you can actually choose between holding it on the side of the arms, or you can actually mount it on the back, depending on which one you like. As for the back of the waist, there's actually this little piece that you can actually flip inside, revealing a hole in it. And this hole, you can actually put a rifle holder onto it, which in terms can hold the rifle on the back of the waist. Now, you don't like to put the rifle on the back, you can actually take this off and mount the bazooka onto the back on this hole as well. Which is a little neat gimmick in here. Obviously the beam saber handles goes onto the backpack and aside from that, that's pretty much it. Or so you thought. 
Now I also thought the same as well until I actually went through the instruction manual to find out that there's actually one gimmicks that actually make this piece much more worth it than you actually think. And this gimmick is this. 3, 2, 1. Can you see it? Now if you can't see it, it's actually not your fault because the lighting in my video shooting is actually a lot brighter than what this is showing you. Now, for those who can't really see clearly, what just happened is that I switched it on and the lighting came on. The lighting on the eyes and also the sensor right on top of the head as well as the exhaust on the chest, those has been light up. Not to mention the back sensor of the head, that's also light up. Now it's not a very bright lighting so definitely not showing it clearly if you can't see it. And in order to do this, you simply just remove the backpack on the Gundam and also remove the cover on the part that's near the waist on the red part and you can see what you see right now. Remove that white pin there that's actually preventing the battery from connecting and then switch the button from off to on on the waist and then it will light up. It's very simple. Now it does include battery in it but I do recommend that if you're not going to switch it on for long, do remove the battery from the Gundam. Otherwise the battery might leak and then it's going to cause damage to this one. So definitely recommend that if you're not going to use the lighting effects, remove the battery completely. And that's it with the gimmicks. And here is the display stand. The base of the display stand is actually very simple, very much like the metal build. You got the dark gray as the background and then on the left corner it says Gundam Factory Yokohama. And then on the right side are the details of this Gundam information. And that's it. But one thing that's very neat about this stand is that alongside with the supporting arms for the Gundam, there are all these racks that's actually for the weapons. And you can mount all the weapons including the beam effects onto here. And not only that, you can actually mount the hands, the different type of hands that you can change into, onto the side as well, which is very, very generous of them thinking of this. So basically, you can actually put everything that came with this set onto this whole entire display stand, which is very, very nice. And I like this gimmick a lot. A lot of times when the products when you come off, you got a tons of accessories that tends to stay in the box. And whenever you need to change it, you have to go through the box again. In these kind of situation, you can actually quickly change it and then put it back onto this display stand as a whole. Now one thing I do want to express my disappointment is that I was expecting the display stand as a hanger much like it is replicating the life-size Gundam in Yokohama with all the hangers all around it. That's what I was expecting when I purchased this piece. Unfortunately, what we got is just a simple stand and then also the weapon rack. In conclusion, what do I think about this piece? This piece is actually pretty decent. You have actually all the details on this. It's done very nicely. All the decals are there, as well as the paint job are done pretty well as well. But there are actually some issues with that, and which is the overall proportion is not really nice. If you look at it in front, the hands and legs are actually very thin compared to the main body on the chest. However, I totally understand this. It's because they replicate the live Gundam in Yokohama, so it's somewhat understandable. But aside from that, there's actually not much gimmicks onto this piece, which caused this to drop in points. Now, I know that there's actually the lighting on this, but as you know, the lighting is actually very not apparent, so unless you are in a very dark area, otherwise you can barely see it. And also not to mention that this piece is actually very costly. So if you're thinking of purchasing this one, I would suggest you rethink this and maybe purchase something else instead. Unless they actually drop this in price down to about 20,000 yen, Otherwise, at the current price of 29,000 yen, this is actually pretty expensive for the amount of gimmicks that it gives us. There's just not worth it. So with that, I'll actually rate this piece an 8 out of 10. So that's it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and find it useful. Do support me by hitting that like button and also subscribe to my channel for more videos. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching and Happy New Year.